Dear members of the Government Commission, dear ladies and gentlemen, uh, today um, there is a session of the Government Commission on making the decision and approving prime and backup crew of the transportation and vehicle Soyuz TMA 19M. Previously, designer general review and the uh, collegium of the Government Commission received the reports on the condition of the ISS during the, prepara the preparation of the transportation vehicle and readiness of the ground support services, and the decision was made to launch on December 15, 2015, manned uh, transportation vehicle, uh, Soyuz 19M. Yesterday, in accordance with the schedule of the preparation of the of launch to the launch, uh, the rocket was delivered to the launch pad, and all the work has been uh, completed with a high level of reliability. My recommendation is to listen to the report of the head of the GCTC, Yuri Valentinovich Lanchikov on the recommendations on assigning prime and backup crew. Good afternoon, and dear colleagues, members of the Government Commission, in order to execute uh, the space flight uh, for increment 46-47 expeditions, prime crew was trained. Malenchenko Yuri Ivanovich, commander of the vehicle flight engineer of uh, expedition 46-47, Copper Timothy, flight engineer of the Soyuz vehicle, uh, commander of Expedition 4647, Peak Timothy, Flight Engineer of the Soyuz, Flight Engineer of Expedition 4647, Backup Crew Anishin Anatoly Ayakseevich, Anisha Takoya, Flight Engineer of the Soyuz, Flight Engineer of the Expedition Rubens, Caitlin, Flight Engineer of the Soyuz, and the ISS part of the Kasvana training. All the plans were executed in full, and all the crew members passed their integrated training. Uh, the um, crew members have passed their medical evaluation, and during the meeting at the Cosmo Training Center, um, the Commission reviewed the results of training and gave uh, its recommendation the crew members of the long 46-47 increment uh, ready for launch on Soyuz 19M and working on the ISS and the pre-launch preparation of the crew has been completed in full. The recommendation prime to approve prime crew on Soyuz 19M, Malenchenko Yuri Ivanovich, Commander, Flight Engineer Copper Timothy, Flight Engineer Peak Timothy, Flight Engineer 2. Backup crew, Commander Ivanishin Anatoly Alexeyevich, Flight Engineer Anisha Takoya, and Flight Engineer to Robin Skatlin. Thank you. Thank you. Now I would like to listen to Designer General of Amend uh, Space Complex, uh, Sergei Yurovich Romanov, on the of the rocket uh, space launch cost uh, complex. Good afternoon. Yesterday, we completed the first day preparations for results of the preparation of rocket uh, so Soyuz and space vehicle Soyuz are ready for launch. Thank you. If there are no other presenters would like to listen to Mr. Skorobogatov on their deci decision, we would like to provide uh, for your review the decision of the Gagarin Commission. Having received the reports of the Gagarin Cosmo Training Center, Yuri Valentinovich Lanchikov on the readiness of the crews and recommendations on the prime and backup crew members for Soyuz 19M. And the designer general, uh, Sergei 
after amount of on the readiness of the rocket launch uh, complex and the subsequent activities, the Governing Commission has decided first approve uh, the prime and backup crew members for Soyuz TMA 19M prime crew. Commander of Soyuz, Malenchenko Yuri Ivanovich Roscosmos, Flight Engineer Copper Timothy, NASA, Flight Engineer 2 Peak Timothy, European Space Agency. The backup crew, Soyuz Commander Ivanishin Anatoly Alexeyevich Roscosmos, Flight Engineer Anisha Takoyo, JAXA, Flight Engineer 2 Rubens Caitlin, NASA. Second, continue preparing the uh, space launch costs, uh, complex uh, to launch during the designated time. Any proposals or recommendations? We approve the decision of the Government Commission. We would like to listen to the Director General I Igor Anatolyevich Komarov, Director of the Roscosmos. Dear colleagues, I am glad that Prime and Backup Crew of Expedition 4647 to, IS, to the ISS have undergone all the main preparations. Prime Crew Yuri Malenchenko and astronaut Timothy Kopra and Timothy Kopra. Timothy Peak and backup crew Ivanish and Anatoly, Anisha Takoya and Rubens Caitlin have been considered ready for launch. A lot of work has been done, and I would like to express my appreciation to all the employees at GCDC and all the Roscosmos and contractor employees for the preparation for launch. I am confident everything will go well. And the um, crew members of 4647 Expeditions will join their colleagues on board of the ISS. So the best wishes for work. I'd like to listen to the um, to Kirk Alden Sharman, um, head of the ISS program, NASA. I'd like to congratulate the Prime and Backup crew in completing all of your training successfully. Доброе утро. Во-первых, хотел бы поблагодарить и поздравить основной и дублирующий экипаж с успешным завершением подготовки. It's been a tremendous amount of work on your part, and congratulations on your success. Вы проделали огромную работу, и я поздравляю вас с этим успехом. Thank you to uh, GCTC, uh, Roscosmos, ESA, NASA, all the trainers who work so hard to uh, to help make your success uh, uh, assured. Я благодарю ЦПК, Роскосмос, конечно же, ЕКО и НАСА, всех специалистов, которые вложили столько, чтобы убедиться, что ваша подготовка будет успешной. Сегодня я разговаривал со специалистами Центра управления полетами в Хьюстоне. МКС находится в замечательном состоянии, и вас ожидают на борту. Мне сказали, что на борту все тихо, сказали, что на самом деле даже очень тихо. So, uh, we look forward to having you up on board. It's a, a busy rest of December. Um, we have some spacewalks early next year, both the U.S. and a Russian spacewalk, and, uh, and uh, Progress, and uh, Dragon, and a Cygnus vehicle is there uh, waiting for your arrival as well. Ожидаем вашего прибытия. Декабрь у нас очень напряженный. У нас запланированы выходы как с российского, так и с американского сегмента. Запуск прогресса, запуск Сигнуса и других кораблей, таких как SpaceX. And so you have a, a, busy, uh, a busy schedule in front of you. Uh, I, I look forward to your success, um, completing uh, all those vehicle operations as well as a, a very robust uh, research program for both Russia, US, ESA. Um, and, and including a joint research program. We're looking forward to, uh, to you all working together to produce research results for, uh, for all of us. С нетерпением ожидаем вашей успешной работы, связанной с прибытием, разгрузкой и загрузкой кораблей, которые я только перечислил. Научной работы, конечно же, по научным экспериментам, экспериментам ЕКА, экспериментам НАСА и, конечно же, совместным экспериментам, которые очень и очень важны. Надеемся, что результаты, которые вы получите, дадут нам прекрасные результаты для всех нас здесь на Земле. So I wish you a very successful increment and I look forward to you, uh, look forward to you being back up on space station and, uh, and allowing it to make the noise that it normally should have. Поэтому желаю вам прекрасной экспедиции, с нетерпением ждем вашего прибытия на МКС, с тем, чтобы услышать опять тот шум, который мы от станции ожидаем. Слово предоставляется генеральному директору Юрекс. Director General 
of European Space um, Agency, please. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and especially good morning to the team and the backup team for this flight. Доброе утро, дамы и господа, и, конечно же, доброе утро основному и дублирующему экипажу. I would like especially to thank our international partners, Roscosmos and NASA, with whom we can work together for these flights. Во-первых, хотел поблагодарить международных партнеров наших, Роскосмос, НАСА, с которыми мы сотрудничаем в рамках подготовки к данному полету. It is especially at these times of utmost importance to cooperate. Для нас это время является очень важным для продолжения сотрудничества. Space is above the Earth, and therefore the space activities are the perfect instruments to bridge earthly problems. Космос неделим, конечно, и поэтому является самым основным элементом, где мы можем решить все проблемы, существующие на Земле. Yuri, Tim, and Tim is the international team of this flight. Юрий, Тим и Тим, они являются международным экипажем данного данной экспедиции. If you organize it in another way. Tim, Tim and Yuri, you get TTY. А если немножко поменять состав экипажа, получается Tim, Tim и Yuri, получается TTY. Which is a very experienced interface in communication and hopefully a symbol for the perfect cooperation between all the three crew members. Это очень важный интерфейс системы коммуникации. Я надеюсь, он позволит использовать весь опыт, который существует в рамках вашего экипажа для общения. Tim Peak was selected out of 8,413 European applicants and is the first European astronaut of British nationality traveling to the ISS. 8,413 заявлений было подано и выбран один Tim Peak. Он является первым британским астронавтом, который будет направляться на МКС. The name of his special mission is Principia, uh, related to Isaac Newton and at the same time to Albert Einstein, who wrote his theory of gravitation just 100 years ago. На самом деле, принципе, это то, как называется миссия Европейского космического агентства. Она связана с Исааком Ньютоном и Эйнштейном, который более ста лет назад создал теорию притяжения или теорию относительности. Isaac Newton, that 200, no, 300 years ago, Isaac Newton. Uh, was a uh, very specialized person, and it said he was magic, math, and money. А, конечно, Ньютон, который жил более 300 лет назад, он был очень знаменитым человеком, и он концентрировался на магии, на деньгах и на других важных вопросах. And if you allow me, I would just quote him. Позвольте мне зачитать его цитату. First two quotes are political. Первые две цитаты политические. We built we built too many walls and not enough bridges. Мы создали слишком много стен и мало садов. Second one, I can calculate the motion of heavenly bodies, but not the madness of man. Вторая это то, что я могу рассчитать движение небесных тел, но не сумасшествие людей. Now one for rocket technology. И теперь для ракетных технологий. In every action, there is always opposed and equal reaction. Для каждого движения вперед всегда есть равносильное движение назад. To science, to me, there has never been a higher source of earthly honor or distinction than that connected with advances in science. И еще для меня никогда не было самого замечательного вызова, чем тот, который связан с продвижением науки. And the last one. For the whole mission, what goes up must come down. И, конечно же, последняя цитата, которая касается всего полета, что поднимается вниз, обязательно упадет назад на землю. We wish all three of you a safe and successful journey, and looking forward to your scientific results. Слово предоставляется командиру основного. I'd like to listen now to the commander of the prime crew of the Soyuz vehicle, Malenchenko Yuri Ivanovich. Dear members of the government commission, dear chairman, uh, crew of Soyuz GMA-19M is ready uh, for flight. I would like to express our appreciation for your trust. Uh, we will complete the mission program in full. We have all the assets available for that. We would like to express our appreciation to all the organizations and agencies who participate in our training and who are continuing their work at uh, the launch pad at, at the uh, Cosmodrome. Thank you for your kind wishes. I would like to listen to 
Timothy Capra, flight engineer. I would like to express our appreciation to the Commission for this opportunity to fly to the station on the Soyuz vehicle. Our training at, in Star City was great. All our instructors were highly professional, dedicated to their mission. We are ready for our flight as a result of their work. We saw our vehicle. It looks great. I would also like to say that I am particularly appreciative for the opportunity to be a part of this international program. Thank you. I'd like to listen to flight engineer to Timothy Pick. Thank you. It's a great honor for me today to represent Europe and Great Britain. International Space Station is a great model of international cooperation. I am very proud that I am a part of this program. Our training and preparation went great, and we're ready for our mission. I am looking forward to working on board of the ISS and to fly to space with uh, Tim and Yuri. And to summarize, I'd like to say thank you for your support. Dear Yuri Ivanovich, uh, Timothy Peek, and Timothy Copper, on behalf of the Government Commission, we would like to express our heartfelt uh, congratulations on assignment as a prime crew of a vehicle so used to TMA 19M. We wish you successful completion of your mission and safe return to Earth. Thank you. Dear ladies and gentlemen, just now, this hall saw the meeting of the government commission that approved the prime and backup crew of ISS and Expeditions 4647, who will be launching on Soyuz uh, TMA 19M on December 15th of this year, tomorrow. Prime crew, commander of the transportation meant vehicle Soyuz TMA 19M, flight engineer of increment 4647 Yuri Ivanovich Malenchenko, Russia, Russia Roscosmos, flight engineer of the transportation meant vehicle, flight engineer of Expedition 46 and Commander of Expedition 47. Flight Engineer ISS 46, Flight Engineer ISS 47, Commander. Timothy Kofra, NASA, the United States of America. Board Engineer 2. Flight Engineer 2 of Transportation and Vehicle, Flight Engineer of Expedition 4647, Timothy Pick. Flight Engineer 2, ISS 4647, Flight Engineer, the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, ESA, Timothy Pick. Backup crew, commander of the manned transportation vehicle, flight engineer of the ISS, Anatoly Ivanishin, Roscosmos, Russia. Flight engineer, Roscosmos, the Russian Federation. Board engineer, flight engineer of the Soyuz vehicle, ISS flight engineer, Takuya Anishi, JAXA. Engineer 2 of Soyuz Vehicle, Fight Engineer of the ISS, Caitlin Rubens, NASA, U.S. We would like to start our press conference for Prime and Crew. We are starting our press conference. The crews are ready to answer your questions, and the first is Roscosmos asking. Good afternoon. Congratulations on uh, approval by the Government Commission. Two questions. First question to Yuri. That is your second flight to the ISS or in space. Uh, fifth flight to the ISS. I would like to ask you, what are you expecting to see new? You have um, done an EVA, you have gone to the station. Are you expecting to see anything new? I would like to say that each flight it has um, it's special in its own uh, way, and there is always a program um, that is different from the previous ones, and the station is changing, 
inside has been equipped and outfitted so all on every time you will see something you see for the first time and also for results of the dynamic operations we're going to see it, um, uh, two Russian vehicles and four uh, uh, partner vehicles that will be uh, looking all very interesting interesting to work with all of that so we're hoping to see all of it. Thank you. And my second question for Timothy Peak. Congratulations. It's your first space flight. Congratulations on it. So my, quest my question is, I know that Yuri Gagarin is uh, you, um, do you like it? And Isaac Newton is the theme of the mission. Uh, is your science program going to allow you to get so deeply involved in science as Isaac Newton did? Thank you. The, the wonderful thing about this uh, mission is that I'm able to actually conduct some of the experiments that Sir Isaac Newton has set in process. Одна из интересных и чудесных вещей, которые возможно выполнить на станции, это эксперименты, которые были заложены Исааком Ньютоном. Of course, the, the point of the International Space Station is that we do science in microgravity. That's why it's there. And uh, Newton, of course, uh, was one of the, the founding fathers in understanding gravity. И, конечно же, основное, одно из основных назначений Международной космической станции это выполнение экспериментов в условиях микрогравитации. И Ньютон является основоположником, отцом данных экспериментов. So I'm delighted we have a very busy program ahead of us, uh, over 265 experiments during the six-month mission coming up. So it'll be a, a busy time, and I think now we're just ready to uh, get on with the mission and get to work. У нас достаточно серьезная и обширная программа назначается на данную экспедицию, и более 265 экспериментов, и я считаю, что мы готовы к выполнению. Спасибо. Спасибо. Прошу. Thank you. Please, next. Rob Navius from NASA Television. I have two questions. First for Tim Copra. Tim, uh, you and your crewmates will arrive on station in what arguably will be one of the busiest periods in station history. How will, how complex will it be for you guys to orient yourself right off the bat, hit the ground running, and yet blend in with the home stretch of the one-year mission, visiting vehicle operations, a spacewalk in the offing in January, and all the rest? You know, uh, Space Station has always been very busy, and uh, one thing I can say is that I've seen the progress of both our training and the operations on board Station improve over time, and so really, in, in our opinion, the hardest job is the, the grounds job to coordinate all the activities, but we're uh, going into a great place because Scott Kelly has been there for nine months now, is a very competent and calm commander, and we're looking forward to working with him. And for Tim and Tim, the inevitable question, how do you guys plan to spend Christmas on board the International Space Station, and what are your thoughts on being away from home for the holidays? Uh, you know, we've been so busy focused on this mission um, that I kind of forgot Christmas is just over a week away, actually. Um, and so, of course, we'll be fairly new on board the space station. And for myself, my first time, I'll still be adapting to zero gravity. But of course, we'll be enjoying the fantastic view of planet Earth and our thoughts We'll be with everybody on Earth enjoying uh, Christmas and with our friends and family, of course, and we'll thankfully be able to give them a call on Christmas Day. I also heard that a Christmas pudding went up on orbit before, so we some treats as well. Hi, Dallas Campbell, BBC TV for Stargazing Live. A question for Tim Peake. Tim, for months now you've been uh, answering thousands and thousands of questions from people all up and down the UK, from young, uh, young people especially. There are young girls and boys who could probably write doctoral theses on uh, going to the bathroom <laughs> in space. Um, I just want to say, when you leave tomorrow, you will be taking the pride and excitement of everybody back home, so much so you probably won't need any fuel to get into orbit. I think that'll probably do it. But I just wanted to just sort of check with you that you will have time to pause and just reflect on all that goodwill that's, uh, that's, that's, that's going there with you and have a little bit of, a bit of time to relax too. That's probably the... Oh, sorry. 
That's probably the best piece of advice I've been given by many astronauts and cosmonauts who have flown before, is to make sure you get time to look out the window, not for taking a photograph, but just to enjoy it for your own benefit. And thankfully, in a, a six-month mission, 173 days on orbit, I uh, hope to get plenty of opportunities to do just that. Thank you. Anna Samolenka, uh, Space uh, Center. Usually the question is to cosmonauts and astronauts who already have some spaceflight experience. Uh, question, what things that you, you are used to in your regular life do you miss in space most? Thank you. Personally, I always uh, felt lack of uh, uh, emotional communication that people experience on Earth with uh, your relatives, with your friends, with your co-workers. You usually work with a large uh, uh, number of people. This is something we lack in space. And it is very noticeable. However, right now on board, there are six people um, on board of the ISS. It is a uh, tight-knit community, and I'm looking forward to this flight. We'll uh, miss our friends and our family, but uh, we have a great crew on board, and we have the means to connect with them via technology, so we can call our friends and family, as well as have video conferences. Those are probably the biggest things that we miss. Channel 1, Alexei Kripanov, a uh, question for all of uh, cosmos and astronauts of Prime Crew. Uh, the EVA program that you're going to have, uh, what are their goals? What was your special training about? And if it's going to be someone's first EVA, what can you compare it to? On uh, the ground here, when we experience something unusual, we're saying it's like outer space. What can you compare your EVA with? Thank you. So we have uh, one U.S. spacewalk that's currently being coordinated. Uh, the primary activity for this EVA will be to replace a box that helps uh, work with the electrical control system on board. And so uh, that needs to get repaired. It's on the very end of space station, and so that'll be a very interesting view of both station and the Earth. Одна large task is to lay some cables along the, the pressurized volumes of space station. And so I think we'll have a full day if uh, we end up doing this in mid-January. And the secondary large task is to lay some cables along the, the pressurized volumes of space station. And so I think we'll have a full day if uh, we end up doing this in mid-January. Teacher's Gazette, Olga Maximovich, I have a question. Uh, you probably know the Star Wars are going to hit the screens in a week. Uh, teenagers and even adults looking forward to watching the movie. Um, guys like space uh, movies. What about science uh, research movies? Are you planning to take any videos during your expedition, maybe some educational programs? Thank you. Also another question, what do you think astronomy at school uh, that is not being studied right now, do you think it needs to be returned into the high school program? Question for Yuri, I think it should be returned into the school program. Um, I know so, some schools um, um, are introducing that subject. Um, as part of their own initiative, even though it's not in the mandatory school program, and children are interested in our solar system even before they start attending a school, as to educational programs. The Russian uh, expedition program has a number of experiments and a number of educational 
нас в интересах. Events that we're going to conduct as part of making popular our activities in space and attracting the young generation and inspiring their interest to make sure they're able to dedicate their life to a number of space exploration related professions, technologies, including astronomy in the future. Thank you. Good afternoon, Alina Savtenka, winner of the Roscosmos uh, competition. My question is for Yuri Ivanovich. As we all know, at present, RC Energy is working uh, on the new vehicle, but the cotton uh, Question, are you planning to fly into space on this uh, new future space vehicle? Thank you. It's hard to plan so far into the future. Tomorrow there will be a launch in six months of intense work. And this is what I'm currently focused on. As to the new vehicle, we are hoping that six months from now and the most likely crew who would be launching on that, this would be uh, the crew who are going to start training uh, within the next several days in order to be able to launch on that new vehicle. Thank you. Thank you. Palab Ghosh, BBC News. First of all, good luck, Tim. Um, what is the thing you most want this mission to achieve? And secondly, what is the thing you're most looking forward to personally once you're on board the space station? Uh, with regards to the first part of the question, um, I think it's really an important step that uh, Great Britain is now part of the International Space Station program within the European Space Agency. So um, I'm delighted that that's occurred and uh, to, to some extent I, I think the first part has already achieved uh, in, in terms of what I hope for this mission and that's educational outreach. Um, I think it's a wonderful opportunity to inspire a new generation of scientists and engineers and um, we certainly have, I think, the most ambitious educational program with this mission of, of er any European space mission. So I'm delighted with that, and I, I thoroughly look forward to uh, following that program throughout the next six months. Um, and I'll be enjoying that as well. Some of the experiments we'll be doing on board the space station will be um, a lot of fun with the kids. Um, the second part of the question, it really has to be the view of planet Earth. And as much as I've spoken to flown astronauts and as much advice as they've given me, I don't think anything can truly prepare you for that moment. And um, that will occur in the Soyuz spacecraft once we get injected into orbit. And I'll be able to uh, look out the, the right window and see that wonderful view of planet Earth. Thank you, Tim. Best of luck. Uh, Tim Peake, uh, six years of training will have prepared you very well technically for this mission. You are a human being, though. How well do you prepare emotionally for the ride of your life? Uh, and how will you sleep tonight? That, that is a good question. And the, the space agencies do a great job in preparing us, both physically and psychologically. A couple of training events I've taken part in that have helped have been the European Space Agency CAVES mission, seven days living down a cave with international astronauts. And of course, the NASA's NEMO mission as well, 12 days underwater. And these missions really are space analogs, and they help us to prepare for space missions and the psychological elements of flying into space. But I think more importantly than that, it's the informal, casual discussions with your friends and colleagues who've flown in space. That's what truly prepares you for what's to come. Um, Dan Rivers from ITV News. You seem absolutely cool as a cucumber about this mission. Uh, but what words of, of reassurance do you use uh, for your family, particularly your two young boys ahead of this mission, and the long separation as well that's going to be involved? Yeah, that's, that's another good question, and I think that that process has been ongoing over two and a half years as well. Um, my family have been living in Houston, and um, I've made sure that we've spoken about the training. They've been to see me at Johnson Space Center um, through the space station mock-up facilities. They've seen where I'm going to eat, where I'm going to sleep, where I'm going to use the loo, which is the most exciting part for them. Um, and they've also been to watch me go underwater in uh, the neutral buoyancy facility and practice for EVA spacewalking. 
So that's all really helped them to appreciate what is coming up. Um, also, I think this process of coming to view the launch, coming to see a part of our life, of what we train for, um, I think that all helps in, uh, to prepare the family and the friends for what's to come over the next six months. Uh, good morning, my name is uh, Maria from Russia today in Spanish. My question is for Timothy Peake. Uh, you say that you have to choose uh, three songs to listen before the lunch off, and I would like to know which ones uh, are they. <laughs> so uh, that's my question. Thank you very much. Good luck for everyone, and drive safely. Yes, I had a little bit of help with Twitter on this, but the three songs I've chosen was uh, Queen, Don't Stop Me Now, which I thought was very appropriate. Um, U2, Beautiful Day, uh, great band, and uh, uh, I'm a huge fan of U2. And Coldplay, A Sky Full of Stars. Um, I've also got a couple of surprises for the other crewmates, but I won't tell you about those just yet. Hey there, William Whiteman, uh, Russia Today as well. Um, my question is for Tim Peake as well. Uh, first, let me say good luck as well, obviously, as a fellow Brit. Um, you've, um, I saw on Twitter the other day that you said that uh, even though you're going to be up in space, you're not going to miss out on seeing the new Star Wars film. Uh, can you uh, fill us in on how exactly this is going to happen? <laughs> We're very fortunate on board the space station to have great communication these days. Um, and we've already mentioned about the ability to phone friends and family um, from the space station. And once a week, we get a, a private video conference with family as well. But in addition to that, our crew support guys on the ground who do a fantastic job can also upload uh, the occasional movie or TV program for us to watch. So uh, we will have access to that. And on board the space station early this year, um, Scott Kelly was the first person to deploy a projector and a, uh, a flat screen as well, um, a white projector screen. So we'll be able to watch Star Wars up on board the space station at some point. Hi, Tim Peake. Uh, question for Tim Peake again from BBC. Uh, I'm curious, how do you plan on spending your last night for now on Earth? Well, the, the last night on Earth uh, is traditionally spent uh, with the family watching the, the Russian movie, White Sun of the Desert. So that's what we'll be doing later on today and then getting a good night's sleep ready for tomorrow's launch. Uh, hello, Rory Challens from Al Jazeera English News. Um, I've heard that astronauts and cosmonauts are uh, suspicious, sorry, uh, 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 <coughs> believe in certain rituals and things like that that they do before the, before the launch. Can you tell us what you're going to be doing uh, and any little lucky charms or anything like that that you've, you're going to be taking with you? I'm not sure that, uh, that astronauts and cosmonauts are any more um, superstitious than your average pilot, so maybe we are a little bit superstitious. Uh, but uh, one symbol that we have on board that I think will be very meaningful is a zero-G indicator. And the zero-G indicator will be uh, a commemoration to the 55th anniversary of Yuri Gagarin's launch in April of 1961. So it'll be a little medallion and a rocket. And so once we hit zero gravity, we'll see this float. I would like to add that Tim um, remembered about the indicator of zero gravity, a, a very good coincidence. We're going to celebrate the 55th anniversary of the flight of the first um, uh, flight of the uh, cosmonaut. And it's going to be uh, Valentina Ivanovna uh, Gagarin uh, will be celebrating 80th anniversary. We're going to be uh, mentally sending our congratulations. Uh, we're glad that these such very good events fall into the time frame of our fl flight. My name is Monica Grady. I'm from the Open University, and I'm also here for the Royal Institution Christmas Lectures. Kevin Fong is going to be talking about living and working in space. Can you give us a bit of a, a clue about how you think you're going to be working in terms of the dedication that you need? What have you been through to get, get to this point? What bit did you enjoy most of your training? Well, Monica, yes, it is six years since I joined the space agency and two and a half years since I've been assigned to this flight. So there is an awful lot of training that goes on in, in preparation for a six-month mission to the International Space Station. 
and uh, it's very hard to sort of narrow it down to just one thing that you've enjoyed the most, but uh, a couple of the highlights of the training have been experiencing weightlessness, albeit just for 30 seconds at a time during the parabolic flights that we do. Um, and also for me, EVA training, um, wearing the pressurized suit and going underwater doing six hours of, of training for a spacewalk, uh, that's been a, a real highlight as well. Um, and of course, I think the fact that uh, you know, we're here, we're ready to go for the mission uh, to fly to space tomorrow, it's, it's just thanks to the hundreds uh, of people who have trained us over the last six years and the thousands of people around the world who actually support the station operations on a daily basis. Rob Navius, NASA Television for Tim Copra. Speaking of an anniversaries, you'll be launching on the 50th anniversary of the first rendezvous in space, Gemini 6, Gemini 7, and 1965, flying within a foot of each other. As you sidle up to the International Space Station for docking, will your thoughts harken back a bit to how far we've come in human spaceflight in a half century? That's a, a great uh, question, Rob, because I think uh, all of us are really humbled by the effort that's been put into building the International Space Station. And uh, to continue on that, I think that the thing that, uh, that we can take from that is the fact that it's really been an evolutionary uh, path for us to be able to build this space station. And, uh, and then one final word, word on that is the fact that uh, I think all of us really look at those those uh, predecessors to us as our heroes, just as they are to many people in the American and international public. Um, first of all, you've been quoted saying that the most difficult part of doing any of this was learning Russian, and I just want to say I have immense sympathy for you yeah. with that. <laughs> I was wondering if you could say a couple of words for that. Secondly, a question no one's asked, just how irritating have references to David Bowie been? Um, and thirdly, really a, crew for, uh, sorry, a question for, for everybody. Where do you see the future of manned space flight going? Can you see a time in the foreseeable future when we perhaps return to the moon or, or maybe even carry on to Mars? Uh, so yes, the first part of the question, uh, very difficult. <laughs> it's been a struggle, but it's uh, a very different experience, conversational Russian versus a technical Russian. And for me, I find that once we get in the, the spacecraft and we open up the flight documentation and we start working through our procedures, then uh, we work extremely well as a crew together and everything flows um, very smoothly. And uh, a lot of thanks to, to Yuri for helping out um, in that respect as well. Uh, David Bowie, well, yeah, Chris Hadfield did a great job, and uh, I think he really opened up human spaceflight to many people around the world who wouldn't otherwise have looked at it. So um, uh, I won't be playing the guitar or singing any songs, but uh, we'll certainly be having as much fun as we can during the mission. Um, and more seriously, the, the future of human spaceflight is very exciting. We're in a phase now with the International Space Station where we've spent 10 years building it, we're now firmly into the operational phase where we're running uh, science experiments on a daily basis. The number of hours of science we do each week goes up and up. And we're working, of course, science um, for the future of space exploration, but also science for the benefit of people back on Earth. And we have a very firm program um, within the European Space Agency to go to the moon as a stepping stone to going to Mars. And this is not a one-off visit. This is human exploration of the solar system to, uh, to remain there and to do further scientific research. Dear ladies and gentlemen, we are ending our conference. So thank you for interesting questions. And uh, I think that it's uh, the time to say and to wish good luck to our crew. And, uh, those, and please, crew, back up and prime stay for uh, taking photos with you. Thank you very much. Please, um, uh, Prime Crew, stay. <laughs>